The Ampersand Inn, written by C.J. Arellano. Fade in. Exterior, lagoon, night. A boxy 1970s-era limousine sits parked beneath a willow tree next to a small lagoon. Moonlight filters through a fat layer of fog that hangs over the water's grimy surface. Interior, limousine, continuous. Wendell, mid-thirties, ball of anxiety, sits in the driver's seat. Thick sideburns peek out beneath his black visor hat. He wears a black suit and tie. His eyes are shut. He takes some heavy breaths. Someone else's hand reaches up from below and grips the steering wheel. Wendell opens his eyes and sees a sliver of a tattoo sleeve under the person's plaid shirt cuff. What's this? Gary, mid-thirties, perpetually disgruntled, lifts his head from Wendell's lap and sits up in the passenger seat. Wendell taps Gary's wrist. My tattoo? What's the story there? We don't know each other's names, but you want my life story? Well, your arms at least. Is that barbed wire? Gary senses an energy. Oh, you're not one of those people. Hmm? Who think tattoos are for bikers and criminals? No, no, not at all. They don't give tattoos like this in prison. Right. I didn't think so. So, take me for a ride on your hog sometime? I got this done after prison. (laughs) Right, right. I'm serious. I've paid my debt to society. Wendell gulps. A laden silence descends. Can I ask... What I was in for? You don't have to get into details. Ten years. One cellmate. Never told him. But some guy? In some hat? Just... Was it murder? Are are you going to murder me? Gary gives him the longest stare. I'm not going to murder you. Wendell clears his throat and works to zip his pants back up. This was a mistake. Wait. I wasn't thinking. If if anyone finds me here, if you knew who I worked for... Look around. No one can see us. And not just because we're in the middle of nowhere. I'm like you. I've worked for the wealthy. If you're not an asset or an obstacle, you're invisible, okay? You're on your own time. Enjoy yourself. Gary moves to kiss him. I'm not like you. Gary sighs and moves to get out of the car. All right. Hold on, I'm sorry, you're right. Uh, Let's start over. Hi, I'm Wendell. I'm Gary. Gary exits the car. Where are you going? To find Cassiopeia. Exterior, lagoon, continuous. Gary slams the door and walks away from the limousine. And it's not barbed wire. It's jacks on a string. Gary walks toward the lagoon and turns a corner around a thicket of foliage, leaving Wendell's line of sight. Gary stops at the edge of the water. He peers up at the blanket of stars in the sky. Near his ankles, water bubbles. He looks down. The water looks still. He returns his gaze to the stars. He takes a deep breath. As he exhales, he counts. One, two... Three, four, five. As he repeats the breathing exercise, a slimy purple tentacle slithers out of the lagoon and towards Gary's ankle. It does not make a sound as it curls around his foot and crawls over the top of his leather boot. Interior, limousine, continuous. Wendell fastens his belt buckle, which has a bull's head embossed on it. He sticks a cigarette in his mouth and tries to light it. His lighter fails to maintain a flame. He hears Gary scream in the distance. His cries for help go muffled and cease altogether. Wendell cranks his window down and yells, You all right? Exterior, lagoon, continuous. Gary's tattooed arm lies on the muddy ground. The arm has been completely detached from his body. The rest of Gary is nowhere in sight. An unseen entity cloaked in darkness 
drags Gary's disembodied arm into the water. Interior, limousine, continuous. Wendell scrambles to find his car keys. He grabs them from the car floor and puts a key into the ignition. Before he turns it, he thinks. He shakes his head and grunts. He gets out of the car. Exterior, lagoon, continuous. Wendell brandishes a crowbar and walks toward the lagoon area where Gary had just stood. Wendell looks around. Behind him, in the foliage, a shrub moves. He turns and holds the crowbar up like a bat. He squints. He can't see much in the dark. I have a weapon, which I will, um, use. The shrub moves again. Something hides amongst the leaves. Then... Gary's tattooed arm emerges from the lagoon, moving with intent and purpose. Gary's hand grabs onto Wendell's ankle and pulls him into the water. Wendell drops a crowbar. He screams. His hands claw into the mud. He digs. He pulls, trying to save himself. He yanks free of the hand's grasp. But Gary's arm reaches and grips Wendell's ankle with even greater force. Wendell gets pulled beneath the water. He thrashes before he disappears into the depths below. The setting returns to a peaceful, moonlit calm. Wendell's limo driver hat floats on the water's surface, as still as a lily pad. Nearby, a painted wooden sign displays the following words, Pontoon Lagoon. Below, in smaller print, the Ampersand Inn. Next right. Interior, in, day. Sky ampersand, mid-twenties, South Asian, sunny day vigor, opens a pair of silk drapes, spilling warm, natural light into his cozy inn. Floral wallpaper, brass and glass sconces, and carved wooden furniture coalesce into a lush space, dripping with Victorian charm. Dressed in a maroon velvet blazer, Sky moves through various guest rooms, dusting bed frames and dressers that look centuries old. His smoothly manicured hands straighten picture frames, stationary notepads, flower vases, 